Hello hackers! Welcome to another um, video in the advanced exploitation module. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, memory forensics, or really just the concept that, hey, once you know where, where something is in memory, where there's valid memory, you can actually use that as a building block for your next steps. Um, we're going to try to cover one concept, just that concept crawl around in GDB a little and call it a day for the video. All right, so uh, as a reminder, we're still talking about the same um, threading message server where you can connect in, leave messages, retrieve messages, and it uses the heap safely in a single threaded scenario, but with multiple threads, uh, problems occur. All right, and as a reminder again, um, we in the last video leaked the uh, uh, address of actually the the per thread struct which is in the um, thread specific oops arena um, of uh, that process so um, I cleaned up that script a little bit a couple of things I'll point out one is I um, now launched the process in GDB uh, or sorry I launched the process and then attached to it with GDB this is um, so that we can later do memory forensics to crawl around memory when we leak some addresses. Um, a couple of gotchas. I have had very bad luck attaching with GDB after attaching uh, over the network. Um, that GDB attach tends to interrupt um, um, uh, the read system call of whatever thread is reading. It causes havoc. So what I tend to do now is I attach in GDB and I, uh, sorry, I launched the process, I attached GDB now. This takes some time attaching GDB, and then of course it interrupts the, the program and until this continue can run. Um, you might have a race condition in your script where you will try to connect to a process that is currently uh, hung, um, that's currently suspended by GDB. And um, to get around that, I have uh, a sleep here. All right, so, but the attack is the same. I connect uh, with two connections in the background. On one, I send 10,000 allocation and free loops. In the other one, uh, in the main thread I send, uh, or in the main process, I send a bunch of prints. And um, then I read the, the result. And of course we have that race condition in printf through which we leak out the um, that key a pointer back to the p thread struct in tcache um, and uh, with that we can um, get a leak so I'm going to show you this leak and then show you what we can dig around for that's GDB starting up and it failed this time that's fine the race condition doesn't always succeed boom so now we have a, a, a leak at this location this is the per thread struct of uh, most likely thread one because that's what's uh, doing this this looping. All right, so what can we, where can we go from there? All right, the key thing is once we have one address, we go back to drawing board and figure out what else can we get from that. So use all of the information that's available. If you have Right now, what you know is there is valid memory at the page pointed to here. You also know there's writable memory at that page. The per thread struct, of course, is writable. It, it, it has to change. Uh, it has the pointers forward for um, the individual bins um, to the, the free uh, allocations and so forth. It is writable, and you now know where it is, and you know where... And you know that this whole page is full of writable memory, right? So that's very cool. Um, given that, oops, given that you can now check in GDB for, um, and of course we have the the awesome capability of being able to stop what uh, thing we're attacking in the debugger. You don't always have this capability. You might be attacking a remote target or whatever, but we can actually check, hey, what else is there, right? Um, and what is, uh, by knowing this address, do we know any other addresses right away? Some addresses are um, at a constant offset. 
Um, and, uh, but, or, or by, by knowing these addresses, do we know the locations of interesting data? So let's take a look, for example. All right. So we have this address. This is the per thread struct. Let's um, break here. Simple, just control C. Info threads. Uh, we have three threads, but they all share memory. So let's just take a look. All right. Um, this is what we just leaked. Um, it is a the per thread struct um, location of one of these threads. Um, let's take a uh, look at what else is in that page. So a page contains 512 um, keywords. Just zeroed out that page. Boom. A lot of stuff in that page. So a lot of it is uh, pointers back to basically itself. So this is uh, probably some some other structure, maybe some something to do with Arena. This is some, uh, let's see. I mean, I honestly don't know. Uh, there is, what we're looking for is interesting looking things. This looks like an interesting thing, right? And of course, what we were looking for here, as you recall, in the Tcash metadata or in the, in the uh, thread metadata, um, all arenas have a pointer back to the main arena. And here, I bet, is this pointer at this location. Let's take a look. Um, why is it not resolving the symbol in G libc? Anyways. That's what it is. You'll have to take my word for it. Uh, if we, I'll, I'll launch this a different way in a second to, to take a look, but um, it's really weird that it's not resolving the symbol. But if you look at info proc map, this 7F99D80, no, sorry, 7F99DDC5E, 7F99DDC5E is right here in libc in the last mapping of libc which is uh if we actually look at a different way or if you have a gdb plugin installed that gives you permissions the last mapping libc is writable and this is of course the the uh, main arena metadata um let me restart this in a different way so instead of restarting it here, we're just going to, I'm just going to launch it, uh, alt in GDB here, run, boom. Uh, we lost the race. Let's restart it. Boom. We won the race. All right. Here's the address. Now it goes to 8D0 and then 890 is the, is the main arena pointer. That isn't a, a surprise. Wait, something's running in the background. Oh, watch, that wasn't, okay. Okay. I never started this one. <laughs> Run, attack, win the race. Okay. Oh, and of course we ran in GDB, so I disabled the uh, randomization. So let's take a look here. Zero, boom. Uh, oh, sorry, 890 was the offset. The hell? Up until I started recording this video, GDB was happily telling me that that's the main arena pointer. Uh, oh, sorry. There, that's the main arena. Ah, okay, and we'll of course see the same thing. See, this is... Uh, the live demo curse. All right, there we go. We leaked the thing. Let's just redo this here. Okay, we kill it. Here's the per thread struct. Here is that our main arena handler uh, header thing metadata. The arena metadata for our thread arena with a pointer to the main arena. And here we go. It's the main arena. Whew. Okay, cool. So then what else? Um, are there known offsets from here to uh, other places in memory? Um, 
we again know this address or know this page. Um, so let's see, there is um, other pages. So so this this guy is hex two one zero zero zero. Um, in size, there look like it looks like there are other. So this is uh, let's see. This is probably the stack of that first thread. This is the heap of that first thread, or uh, it's it's a heap region that was allocated for that thread, its primary use. This is the stack of the second thread, heap of the second thread, and it looks like obviously there is um, uh, um, a constant offset between the two. So already we know where just by leaking one per thread pointer, we know where all the threads are. Is there a constant offset to libc? Right, we know the location of a libc pointer, but it's a little tricky to extract that. We can and we will, but let's first confirm that the um, distance to libc is not constant. Um, or it is constant. Okay, so I believe actually it is constant. Yeah, 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 of course it is constant. Um, so by knowing where the, the per thread struct is, we also know where libc is. So we don't even necessarily uh, need this guy. We have this offset that will hold over multiple executions. Okay, now we have a different address. And, oops. It doesn't hold. That's right. So, libc is mapped, there's some jitter that happens in this mapping. Not a lot of jitter. In fact, probably that's easily brute forceable. Uh, it might also actually be the fact that we leaked, well, how does that race condition work? Can we have leaked the wrong, let's try it again a third time and see what the result is. That one failed. Let's uh, try the fourth time. Okay. That is the per thread struct. Let's grab the first. See, so there, there is jitter between the base of libc and the base of our um, thread struct. Not a lot of jitter. In fact, it looks like only really two bytes of jitter at worst. We tried this 16,000 times and we eventually get lucky with an offset and now we know no libc. So let's say for now, we know libc with a probability though, or the libc address with a probability of uh, fairly high, right? Um, 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 or one out of 16,000. So depending on your definition of, of high, this can be high, it might not be. All right, um, how, how does that help us? Of course, right away, we see that because there's a buffer overflow here, knowing libc will allow us to wrap as soon as we find out the canary. What else do we need to know to find the canary? We need to know um, uh, where the return address is, for example. We need a, uh, sorry. To do the overflow and not trip the canary, we need to know the canary so that we can write in the canary. Or we need to do some other thing to, to uh, skip over the canary. So anyways, the point is, Already, we know where um, uh, 
to some probability where Libsy is. We know where other thread structs are. And we know where a pointer to Libsy is. We have leaked a pointer to the per thread struct. And again, a little before that is a pointer back to the main arena of Libsy. So that is what we can then focus on to leak next. Uh, so that we know libc with complete certainty. So I'm going to um, end this video here. In the next video, we're going to figure out how to get our hands on the value at this address when we know the address.